Hi everybody, hope you are doing fine. Welcome to the BrainBook channel. I'm Amir. In this video, I want to talk about animal models in research, uh, specifically considering their behavior paradigms. Uh, behavioral analysis in neuroscience is not only for characterizing the animal behavior, but also identify and describe the genetic, biochemical, and cellular correlates of that behavior. Also, it determines uh, genes, proteins, and, and neurons necessary and important for a behavior. For example, uh, tell us that what is the effect of these genes, proteins, and neurons uh, that result in some specific behavior. Uh, the behavioral assessment should be quantifiable uh, with the ability to measure discrete and uh, should be easily observable variable. Uh, and these results are usually presented as bar graphs and scatter plots. For example, if you uh, consider uh, some behavioral uh, paradigms in your study uh, in the results uh, you need to interpret and demonstrate the data with the bar graphs and scatter plots in your studies. Uh, there are three mm, ethical considerations for animal use that are named three R's because uh, the Words are uh, started with the R letter. We say uh, three R's. The first one is replacement, reduction, and refinement. Uh, what is the replacement? We should try to do our research without animal, and uh, or at least use a computational modeling and cell culture as a substitute for using animal and if we couldn't uh, and we had to uh, use animal in our research or study we should choose invertebrates instead of vertebrates or mice rather than a monkey uh, these things are called replacement we should try our best to find a, a replacement for our animal model. Uh, another thing is re reduction. Uh, we must use the minimum number of animals to obtain the valid data. For example, do not use 100 uh, number of animal in our study and after finishing the study, um, we uh, for example, find that uh, 50 uh, was sufficient for our study. Uh, we have reduced the number of uh, our animal and also uh, use the mathematical, uh, ma mathematical analysis to find a minimum number of sufficient number of animal uh, which uh, will tell us that which number is sufficient for us and the last one is refinement uh, we should decrease and the minimum the distress and the pain of the animal during our research and study and also enhance the animal uh, well-being by uh, doing these three uh, considerations replacement reduction and refinement uh, uh, our animal use uh, would be ethical for a study. Uh, there is a question uh, in this regard. Can scientists generally gauge the ability of an essay to provide information about human behavior by examining the essay's validity? Uh, for example, we do some researches and uh, uh, our animal model do some specific behavior. Uh, is it related to the human? Uh, 
uh, we have uh, or can we consider this as a human model uh, to do our research there are three components in the validity of this that are named face validity, construct validity, and predictive validity. Uh, what is the face validity? Uh, for example, if the model behavior or phenotype is similar to the analogous human behavior or phenotype, it is called face validity. Uh, like, uh, for example, decreased social behavior in mice model of autism and human. We can see that both human and rodents uh, that are suffered from the autism have a eliminated social behavior. It is the face validity. We can see t uh, the same phenotype in these two species. Uh, which is called face validity. Another thing is construct validity. What is this? Uh, it says that, uh, for example, um, in both human and animal model have the same underlying uh, genetic and cellular mechanism that result in the same behavior. For example, uh, some specific mutations causing Huntington diseases in both species both in human and, for example, rodents. Uh, it is a constructive validity. Another thing is the predictive validity. What is this? Uh, if a treatment in human patient have the same effect on the animal model, we say it, uh, it is a predictive validity. For instance, uh, when we uh, use uh, antidepressant drugs that are specific to human. When we use them for the rodents, we can see that they have a decreased depression. These drugs or these kind of prescription or treatments uh, have the uh, has the same result in both species. Uh, and now we can see that it is a predictive validity. Uh, in the next two presentation, I will focus uh, on mouse model in uh, biological researchers. Uh, I divide it uh, in two, two parts and cover these uh, subjects including locomotor activity, motor coordination and balance, sensory function, nociception, spe spatial learning and memory, anxiety and depression. Uh, and in these two presentations I cover all the aspects that are related to the rodent behavioral tests uh, for uh, researchers. Thank you for your attention. I hope this video would be helpful for you. Uh, please subscribe my channel and recommend it to your friends. See you later. Bye.